there are quilters, and then there are the amazing women who sew quilts in Gee's Bend, Alabama. You may already know the story of how their work went from unknown to highly collectible, shown in museums and galleries all over the world. This spring, some of those quilts and two of their makers came to Kansas City, thanks to a pair of parishioners from the Country Club Congregational United Church of Christ. Producer Ashley Holcroft looks in on this colorful, cross-cultural collaboration. Meet China and Mary Ann Petway. Though not related, they're direct descendants of slaves brought to Gee's Bend, Alabama in the 19th century. No bigger than three square miles, and at last census, fewer than 300 people. No roads or stores, just a post office. But this isolation was no hedge against history's grasp. From the quake of emancipation to the trauma of having their soul fairy burned as punishment for attempting to vote. Their story is one of resilience, faith, and creativity. But the story of how these ladies got to Kansas City for the weekend is more a story of mystery, gumption, and friendship. And it all started with Jean Ayers. I'm a retired physician who sewed all her life and uh, began quilting in probably the year 2000 and joined the Blue Valley Quilters Guild and found a group of friends that I found very meaningful. And I learned that um, anything with a needle and thread is very common ground for women to be friends. And I began to be interested also in the history of Kansas quilts, if there was something peculiar to the state of Kansas. Found out with a Kansas quilt study group that there really wasn't a quilt that was peculiar to Kansas because there was no cotton grown in Kansas. And so by the time the train brought the cotton, they brought the quilt patterns too. This absence was of particular interest to Jean, who was looking for a fitting logo for the ladies' retreat she had started with best friend Judy Long O'Neill. Their answer would come from an unexpected source. One day I was driving from uh, Kansas City and uh, I said to Judy, I'm just really in the mood to go junkin'. Are you home? Let's go to the Antique Mall in Baldwin, Kansas. And she said, yeah, I'm home, let's go. So we went and we're, we're looking and in the very back I saw a quilt. And I just thought, I think I know what that is. But I, I don't know the history, I don't know the name of the pattern for sure. Jean discovered that her find was in fact a pine burr, the state quilt of Alabama. And when I began to look about the history, there was a woman whose name was Loretta Petway Bennett, who had written the instructions on the pattern for the Alabama archives. I found her on Facebook and began a friendship with her. And eventually I learned she was born in Gee's Bend, Alabama. Not long after, their friendship led to an invitation, one that was easy to accept. Judy jumped on board and the girls hit the road in Jean's Jeep, not knowing what adventures lie before them. It was bow and arrow season and all the guys in the restaurant were in camouflage and we're in there ordering a salad and they're eating racks of ribs and drinking beer. But any hazards faded and they soon found themselves in the quilting mecca of Jean's Bend. There are no handshakes, there are only hugs. Uh, they claim their history and they'll gladly tell you about their grandfather or things they know. Some of them were part of the slaves that walked from Halifax, North Carolina to the P Petway Plantation. So they claim that history, but there's a joy, there's, um, there's a feeling of gratitude, there's a feeling of being blessed, um, there's a feeling when you ask them about their quilts, uh, they talk about when William Arnett, the art collector, discovered them in the 1990s, that they didn't know they were making art. They were uh, making things that were utilitarian for their family. And the trip to G's Bend suddenly wasn't as focused. I mean, I remember to ask about the pine burr, but it became so much more about the experience of the the, the ground and the people and the friendship and their life and understanding the, the relationship to plantation times and, and um, civil rights. And it, it just became an amazing experience, not a history trip. 
Their 2013 tour included several stops and wonderful hospitality. And when their time came to a close, something had changed. We got in the car and we began our long drive back. And I remember that was the quietest part of our trip. We didn't say anything for a long time because it was a very, very moving experience. And we had plans to stop along the way and it just didn't seem important on the way home. It was soon after that Jean and Judy had an idea. Their church is involved in a regional organization devoted to racial and economic equality, More Squared, and having the G's Bin ladies come and share their stories would be a perfect fit. The idea was picked up, other parishioners and volunteers joined, and early in April, it all came together. A lot of these cooks that are hungry here are made up out of old clothing, out of old jean, corduroy, you know, whatever the ladies got a hand on to at the time. I make a quilt by this side, and I say, oh, I don't like this. I cut, and I cut, and I take loose until it get to suit me. Our parents took care of us the way they knew how to take care of us. Best that they know. You know, how. we, our houses, they were not insulated as houses are now. That's where the quilts come from. You know, they made the quilts to put on the floor because we had to lay on the floor. We didn't have no bed to lay on. So mama had to make quilts. When we tell y'all our story, we don't be telling for nobody to feel. We don't want you all to feel sorry for us. We just be telling to let you all know where God had brought us from and what he, what he doing for us and how he had opened up doors and made ways for us. Jesus being is on the map now. Part of the experience for me and for Jean was the gift of the stories that were shared with us. Um, because people that were attending also didn't realize the impact it would have. The quilts were the catalyst for getting us together. So we're surrounded by art and the handwork of these women. And then you realize that you're into much bigger a story than that, which is the story of the quilt. That story merges nicely with our Beyond Belief project, looking at the ways that faith connects the people of Kansas City, and not just through worship, but also how it can bridge racial and ethnic divides. On June 23rd, KCPT will air a 30-minute documentary devoted to those themes. You can also keep up with Beyond Belief online at flatlandkc.org.